All right, so got a little holiday time off, and we're gonna do a little work on this mess. Try to get it to where it'll be somewhat protected from more further deterioration and maybe a little easier to work on. I just got it tucked away in the back here so that it's uh, just out of, the, out of sight. And uh, I guess a little on the story that I can figure on this thing. I noticed when I was fiddling with it the other week that we've got what appears to be the remnants of a sticker that the state cops or sheriffs or whoever put on the trucks that are vehicles that are stuck on the side of the road but it's pretty darn faded and it doesn't appear that it's ever been scraped off or cleaned since it was put on so that's been there a while the other thing i mentioned in the video is the last time this was registered or inspected let's say the sticker expired 3 of 17 that would have put it uh, since it's an emission test they only give you one year stickers in Baton Rouge so the earliest or the last time this thing would have been inspected would have been in March of 2016 and a few other little tidbits Pretty clean under here, but look at this. All of this stuff here in the uh, weather seal for the back of the hood, and then this absolute crazy grime on it I'm gonna bet that this thing failed sometime between March of 16 and March of 17 and got stuck on the side of the road now the reason I'm gonna think it failed given that the oil is good and I found this funnel up under the hood And the coolant bottle has a little bit in it. It ain't pretty, that's for sure. I'm wondering if this thing overheated and just seized. That's what I'm wondering, if they seized it up by running it out of water. Because the oil looks fine, and there's no leaks to suggest that it ran out. And it, there's no new oil in it to suggest that it was failed and then somebody tried to cover up the fact they ran out of oil by pouring a bunch of new oil into it i've seen that before so i don't think that's what happened i think this thing was in reasonable shape may have had some sort of a coolant leak may have had a head gasket issue somehow and we they ended up blowing the motor or seizing the motor by overheating it and then it got stuck on the side of the highway and here we are so it got picked up by somebody, most likely has been either sitting at the people who owned its house forever, although the title's coming from uh, some car yard, which makes me think it could have even been a repo at some point, but uh, that's all I can think. You know, we've got a, there's a few things that I'm probably going to put on my truck. Mine does not have the correct plug down here for this because the pump failed and then the new pump that I got for it, the replacement from AutoZone was incorrect. The, the, well, the pump was correct, but the plug wouldn't work. So it's just got two little spade connectors down there. I may put that terminal back on it. Um, it looks pretty good. It's got a fairly new accessory belt on it. Alternator. Looks to be a replacement manufactured in Mexico, so that could be pretty good. I don't need one, but uh, yeah, that's not a bad piece. I think there's, there's a lot of good stuff here. But the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to pull it out of here, you know, fl flip the grass over that got flopped over by my uh, 
uh, trailer ramp mow this section then I'm gonna put a tarp down on the ground push it back in here and on the on the tarp and then set it on my jack stands on top of the concrete pads on the frame yeah it should work so I can get the thing off the ground and at least be able to do what I need to do with it because one of the first things I think I'm gonna do is I've got some time this weekend I am probably gonna pull the entire rear end out of this beast and after some investigation to make sure that it's feasible and uh, swap the brakes the disc brake system onto mine because I am sick of these drum brakes they feel terrible no matter what I do to adjust them they work fine but the, the left rear is super grabby no matter what especially when it's wet it, it's adjusted correctly there's nothing I've, I mean I'm just sick of the drum brakes on that truck so I'm gonna see if what I'm hoping is that Ford did not have two different axles you know if the axles are the same the housings I can just swap over the parts uh, if the housings are different I may not do it because I've got 355 gears this thing's got 373's I don't really want to swap the center sections because then you got to do a whole bunch of other setup and everything else so that's what we're going to do today all right well there it is and uh everything came off pretty good two of the lug nuts were missing their washers because this has hub centric wheels with flats so the washers they're not acorn style they don't uh, the lug nuts that is they aren't acorn style they don't center it at all they have a built-in washer that goes flat up against it and it requires that the center of the wheel match the center of the axle or pretty much the center of the front end and uh, the back brakes look good I think I'm really hoping that this is gonna work anyway but here's what I found on the front <laughs> garbage they've got walk around this side maybe to get out of the glare we got a half inch to I don't know five sixteenths no half inch to maybe nine sixteenths of spacers attached to this piece of crap um, so your wheels were no longer hub centric I bet this thing rode horrendously badly as far as the front end shaking because I would almost guarantee that these wheels were not centered properly that would be my bet but uh, yeah this was fairly expensive ABS got wrapped up in something who cares don't need it but uh, original Ford calipers everything looks pretty good it really doesn't look bad still will never understand putting a lift kit on an independent front suspension spend all this money you put bigger tires on it and end up with less ground clearance than you started with I don't get it but here's something that I found in the back which I thought was neat I mean I got this held up by a couple of bricks because this was disconnected from wherever the hell it was supposed to be connected and the axle hit the ground when I released it um, but both of these shocks have hit the axle tube at some point in their disastrously eventful life. Now this one is still sort of attached. If you can see that, you got a pretty good dent and a matching scar on the axle. So this kit was uh, not terribly good. I don't know. And this is just hokey as hell putting another one of those bump stop things on it I guess it's it I mean it functions but it's not necessarily how I would do it the other weird thing on this if we look you can see these spring perches are riveted that's factory now take a look at the other side I think
and they're screwed on. And that one in the back, holy crap, that looks like it's screwed on with 5 16 tech screws. Wow. That's, uh, that's nice. I don't know why you would have to take these off. Well, I potentially do. This vehicle was salvaged, titled, salvaged, titled before it ended up at the yard this time. Back in 2011 or 12, this vehicle had an accident. So, I will bet at that time something had tweaked this and that's why we have perches on this side that have been ground out and reattached with things that they really shouldn't have been attached with. That's, that's something. <laughs> but uh, I think I may be done for a little while because it's bloody hot and I'm dripping all over the place. But I like my brakes. They're very clean. Well, this one doesn't move because it's sitting on a brick, but uh, they all move. I'm going to attempt to get this whole thing installed at some point, maybe later today, once the sun goes down a little bit. At least get this axle off uh, so it would be easier to work with. But uh, right now, it's not looking too bad.